is time to check in with Blake Haynes, who's getting financial advice from your disability rep. Blake, how's it going? Yeah, Maddie, that's right. I am over here with your disability rep, Roy Rickshaw, and today we're covering the ghost of old disability claims. Important stuff to know here. Tell me where we start. Super scary stuff. Spooky. Now, a lot of times when people file for Social Security Disability and they're turned down, there's some reluctancy to file again. Mm. They think that older claim is going to be held against them or used against them in some way. Not always the case. Um, so the first thing, y'all, Social Security Disability denies about two-thirds of the initial applications they get, 66 mm. and two-thirds percent. Okay. Um, overall, that's a national number. But those denials don't always hurt our future applications. A lot of times, it's just simply information that wasn't provided. Mm. Uh, work history, for example, or information about how you function at home. Maybe your doctor didn't cooperate in sending in all the records that were necessary or needed. And it was just a lack of information denial. A large part of them really are. Yeah. Can you define what old claims are for me, for people yeah. that may be confused on that? Sure. So when you file for Social Security Disability, you're adjudicated, you're approved, or you're denied. In this case, you would be denied. And then after a period of time passes, you file again. Okay. Right? Your condition continues to be disabling. People are without any other good options. Mm. So they file a new claim and they try the process again. And so it's those retro, or excuse me, those previous claims is what we're talking about. Okay. That mm -hmm. makes sense. All right. What else you got for me? So <clears throat> the question becomes is what do you do when you file a new claim? And so, you know, things you have to consider. For example, your condition may have very much had worsened. Um, oftentimes the denial itself results in some mental health challenges, right? Mm. People who are disillusioned or depressed, you know, get to denial, it's pretty detrimental to their self-being. And so, you know, those things can certainly exacerbate the condition and re result in a different type of uh, medical record set to look at um, for Social Security to adjudicate the second time around. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is just our age in general. Mm -hmm. You know, as we get older, a lot of conditions degenerate even further. Degenerative disc disease, problems with their knees, you know, age takes its toll on folks, and so the condition changes substantially. When you file that new claim, it's very important that you articulate the ways that things have changed. We can't go back to Social Security and say, my condition has been the same since I was 18, yeah. because, hey, we looked at it before. We decided you weren't disabled before. Yeah. There has to be some movement in your condition. Okay. Now, obviously, besides like situation or situations, is there a way that people can then like prep for these claims or be prepared for how to, you know, how to make this process work? Well, and, and talking to somebody that does this is, is probably the best thing there. Yeah. I mean, Social Security is a big enigma for a lot of folks. They don't really know what they're looking at. You have lots of people that say, my God, I can't work. I know I can't work. Yeah. But Social Security's definition of can't work is substantially different than mine or yours, right. or especially our doctors. Okay. So even though you get that whisper in your ear from the doctor that you can't work, that doesn't really mean anything to Social Security disability. They have a very rigid process they follow. And so having a baseline understanding of how they determine disability um, helps tremendously. And talking with somebody that knows the ropes is real helpful in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so explain explain to me why you may be denied a surgery or medication because this is probably something a lot of people out there have dealt with or are experiencing. Yeah, and this actually slide is going to reference when people turn down those procedures. Okay. And so, you know, some conditions are very much so treatable, like a hernia, for example. We go in, we get a simple procedure, we get a, a return to functioning, we can then lift again, for example. Yeah. Other conditions, not so much. And so when we talk about back surgery, a lot of people are terrified of back surgery and with good reason. Um, so Social Security will oftentimes look at us denying care, medication, or surgeries and say, gosh, if you went and had that procedure, would you get better enough, you could go back to work? Mm. And they look at that through the filter of what your resumed functioning would look like as opposed to um, your functioning without the surgery a lot of times. Mm. Now, it's not always the case. Some conditions like back surgeries, for example, are not a high likelihood of success. And so they give you a little more leeway there. But if you turn down medication, you turn down pain medicine, for example, you know, Social Security can hold that against you in some yeah. cases. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so how do we kind of make our case better? How do we brew up a better case, if you will? <laughs> yeah, so you want to be very clear in the way that you present your case. There can't be a lot of ambiguity. If your knees are an issue, your knees need to be an issue from start to finish. Okay. Um, we also want to see things that are very consistent in the record, right? If your knees are an issue, you probably shouldn't be hiking the trails at the park. Yeah. Um, you also want to be very proactive. You know, we can't just find ourselves in this lull where we say it's as good as it's going to get. The doctors can't do anything for me. You've got to keep pushing that envelope. Mm. You've got to keep asking for that help. And then you've got to ask for help when you need it, right? You want yeah. to continue to see new referrals. 
you want to push in your care, but then you also want to enlist somebody to help you with your claim as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of enlisting help, how can people get a hold of you and get connected with you? Right. So the QR code on the screen, you can click. That takes you to a scheduling portal. You can schedule a time with me. You can ring me direct to my desk at the 812-6698. Have time for same-day appointments every day. Give me a ring. That number gets me directly. We'll set up a time to visit about your case. All right. Very cool. Roy, thanks so much for all the amazing tips. Your disability rep. Give him a call. Check him out. Connect with him today. Back to you guys in the studio.